The wheel said we're gonna watch the anti-shooter game. It's beautiful and horrifying. Follow the wheel or be doomed. Europa, Eurasia, Euruska. Roving Euruska? battalions of mechanized military factions engage each other in an eternal conflict whose meaning Euruska? has been lost to time. The what politicians the who started the war are dead. AI algorithms direct fire teams like board game pieces. Towering mobile gun platforms become deities for the communities of soldiers at their feet, embedded in trench lines for generations. Mega cities are raised and then rebuilt overnight Mega by 3D printers. The original shape. Did you see that? That's a face. What is that smile? Who is he? <laughs> That's a big smile. Spider? Is this part of the game? Hmm. Anti-shooter. Printers, yeah. the original shape and meaning of structures and monuments becoming warped, skewed by the hellfire around them. The line between weapon and man has been Ooh! blurred. War, Spider baby! Skewed by the hellfire around them. The line between... Looks like a spider baby. Weapon and man has been blurred. War itself is a symbiotic organism of flesh, steel, and gunpowder. You Ooh, are gun powder. It all. That's me? You're not on either side. Oh! What's this boy here? You're in the middle of war. The factions have no meaning. Everything is 3D printed. Oh, sounds like Warhammer. The elevator pitch for Wait, so they 3D print stuff in Warhammer? I actually don't know. <laughs> That's your grandma? Oh, sorry. It's an EVA unit. This one? Oh, shit. Get in the EVA. Get in the EVA, stop the rush game is basically that you're not this guy you're this guy oh and to be honest while the idea of being a small scale this looks like a, a thing i don't know it reminds me of the mechanicals thingy you know the the mechanicals thingy with legs and there's actually a person on the legs and somebody else rides it i don't know man i'm thinking about the mechanicals what if there's someone hanging out there? Maybe don't question it. I'm this guy. I'm a helpless human being with a dog. Eh, if I have a dog, I don't mind, I guess. It's not so bad if you have a dog. Avenger in the middle of a big war is cool. It only slightly piqued my interest when these developers first contacted me. It what wasn't it? until I sat down with them, really got to understand who these people specifically were, what it is that they were building and why, that my mind began to be blown. Ooh, mind a game blowing born stuff. From the ashes of once great AAA studio systems, a game which is as much an allegory for modern war and conflict as it is to the changing face of art and game development. <laughs> I'm sorry for pausing too much. I just thought there's like juice hanging on the on, in the room. I know it's not juice. This room is like why do they have juice everywhere? First thing that comes to mind, it's juice. This is the changing face of art and game development. Oh, Mecca. Itself. This is Gundam. the winter. It's about war, humanity, machine. <gasps> machine! Yes, tell me about the machine. Forever winter. Mm. Through my short foray into content creation, several studios have approached me about covering their games, and very few have actually sparked my interest. The same can actually be said for my first contact with Fun Dog Studios. Fun Dog? What the hell? I responded to the email anyway, mostly out of curiosity. Rather than the usual interest in a brand integration or a, hey, please check out our game, Fun Dog simply said that their CEO wanted to chat with me to consult. It's a somewhat odd Consultant. request, so I followed up. Sitting down for that conversation might be one of the most important decisions that I've made in my short career in this space. Forever Winter playlist. The first interaction that I had with CEO Miles Williams proved why this studio- <gasps> Oh! Kim jong Gi! I love him! Does he have art for this game? No way. Maybe he's just a fan of Kim jong Gi. Forever Winter is the game, yeah? Was okay, okay. So the name of the game is Forever Winter. It's not anti shooter. <laughs> I noticed some visual similarities between the Forever Winter's initial trailer and a stop motion film by the name of Mad God, directed by Phil Tippett, animation Mad genius God. behind Star Wars and some other classics. It's a verifiable hellscape, grotesque, oozing texture, and for oozing. the most part, outside niche film and animation circles have never mm. heard of it. Initially chatting Mad with my. God. Hold on a minute, what is it? Mad God. 
I've never heard of this. So this is stop motion? Fuck, now I'm interested. It's a movie. I wanna see this. No. Tells about the game's visual style, I had forgotten this film's name. I was saying how the game had a bit of this and that, it reminds me of this animated movie, I forget the director, I said. Miles cuts in, oh yeah, dude, Phil Tippett, Mad God. I was legitimately taken my aback. God. It felt like Miles had read my mind. Oh my god, I like stop motion. This has been what every conversation with the members of the Fun Dog Studios team has been like for me. A team that is so wired into a specific artistic subculture, Blame. so locked into an aesthetic quality of 90s anime, heavy metal, hey, mild yeah. aesthetics that happens to be exactly That's my taste cool. and sense of style. A sense of style that you don't really see That's very That's a really cool anymore. style for this sure. This little anecdote is perfectly emblematic of the exact reason why this studio exists, why this game is being made at all and why that matters. Huh. I'm interested in Mod God, not gonna lie. CEO made the wise decision not to consult Sweet Baby. I don't know who Sweet Baby is. You're a scavenger and you're in hell. Oh. A scavenger. Wait! Have you guys seen this series called Scavenger's Rain? We're gonna watch this trailer. You know what? We're gonna watch this Mad God trailer as well. Scavenger's Rain is really good. If you haven't seen it yet. Scavenger's Rain? Dude. I don't know, it just reminds me of Scavenger's Rain. The word scavenger? This one, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's crazy good. The animation, the story, the characters, the weird world. The world is like... If you've seen um, Paprika before. The Ghibli movie. It's like the, the world is so strange and it's like made out of... Like fungus, like mushroom stuff. Or like coral reefs, you know? the flora and fauna of the world is so weird and so bizarre and then there's about where was there four people or five people so basically a bunch of people crash landed well emergency landed on on a planet and it's so weird and they have to find their way back to the ship right and they have to survive a strange planet it's amazing it's so good you should watch it and there's a baby frog that's so crazy. If you've seen this show before, that baby frog dude, oh my god, it's gonna haunt your dreams. Scavengers Rain. I'll show you what it looks like. There's a crazy frog there. Toad frog? I don't know what it is. This thing. It's crazy. This character right here. If you plan to watch Scavengers Rain, watch out for this guy. He's crazy. Oh, good show though. Good show. Anyway, we're watching Anti Shooter. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good morning, Seal Guide. You ever have one of those weeks where every day feels like a Monday? To understand this team, you need to understand an impossibility. Everything in feels games like a Monday. Over the last mm. 20 or so years. This studio is made up of artists, designers, and creatives who've worked in the AAA industry for decades, who've seen what it does to art. You ever notice how the concept art for characters in a game looks so much better than the yes. final version? Or yes, yes, all are the time. Ever... Dude, concept art is always better than the than the the ones they put in game for sure, for sure. This one, these ones are not gonna make it in game, of course. But they always look so cool, and then the one they put in game is like 20 polygons or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> they always put the most basic ass shit in the game, but if you look at the concept art, it's mind blowing. Very different from what they actually put out in, in the world, you know? 
Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is an anime that sounds like this, but there are like three edited for English viewers that is horribly butchered. Oh yeah, it's Nausicaa. It's not Paprika, sorry. Nausicaa. Um, I said Paprika earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scavenger's Rain is like a Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. Yeah, right. You're right, right. Grim dark genres are blowing up in popularity right now, like Trench Crusade and Forever Winter. Mm -hmm. Daniel, hello! I watched a little bit of Mad God and I could not continue. It's traumatizing. Oh, I want to watch it. It's a stop motion. I just want to see the stop motion. I want to see the art. Do you ever see a case where an artist or designer's original work was blatantly plagiarized by a larger company? The aversion to taking risks and yeah, bringing new ideas like to that. the table, the necessity at following trends. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to take risk in creating character design. They just want to go for the safe uh, choice every single time. They want to make something familiar and safe and something that um, the general populace would accept. They don't really go to the they don't really go for the concept art that much. They don't really go for art. Not a lot of people go for art, dude. Come on, we need more art. The manga is far better than the anime. The anime is too much condensed for its own good. If only we can get a series about the manga. What? What manga? What are you talking about? Nausicaa? I haven't read Nausicaa. No hentai games equals I sleep. <laughs> the oh, point no. isn't to say that AAA games are all bad or that the devs working within that system aren't capable of crafting fantastic works of art. Quite the opposite. But in order for artists to carry their ideas, themes, and goals through that system intact, the stars need to align. With tools like Unreal Engine 5 and the possibility of remote work, a window for talented people to carve their own niche without relying on the support of AAA, but also without its bureaucracy and restraint, for these industry vets, it was now or never. That frustration, however, it's not just the origins of this studio. It's also woven into the very world and tone Ooh, of the game. Ooh, look at that art. That's beautiful. <laughs> and then an American dub. What? The American dub for Nausicaa? Oh, I watched the, I watched the sub. The manga I have not read, but the, that follows the trend. My cat brought home a cicada. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? I bring the cat closer to the mic. Yes, cicada. Oh no, it's fake. There's gonna be a lot of buzzing today. Eh? Sounded like electric shave. No, it's a cicada. It's currently flying in the house. And my cat is very interested in it. Sounds like a cicada. Yeah, he got a cicada in his mouth. Well, it flew away. Eh? It's currently on the cupboards. And my cat wants it. <laughs> I thought you said your cat brought back home a scooter. No, nah, it's a cicada. My father once mistook a screaming cicada as a grenade literally jumped out of a moving van because of it. I don't know what to do in this situation. Do I let the cicada out of the house or what? You just gonna catch it again? Well, you're gonna hear a lot of meowing. Because he cannot reach the cicada. <laughs> Eat it? Oh no, I'm not eating a cicada, dude. He'll eventually catch it again and you will hear the buzzing. Okay, back to the video. I'm sorry. We're passing so much. Game itself. The game is about scavenging, but mostly it's about being the little guy, surrounded by giants all fighting their the own little guy. that'll stomp you out, cut you down as easily as it'll pass you by, unaware of your existence if you're lucky enough. You mm -hmm. make your way in between the flames, picking up what scraps oh, you can, and this using art is to build yourself up bit by bit. Get too strong though, step out of your league, and there will always be a bigger fish ready to remind you of how small you are. Oh. I don't think that I could make this analogy any heavier handed. Rayo Lyra, one of the lead concept artists and lore masters of the Forever cool. Winters universe, told me that to him at least, the devs are the scavengers. 
They pick up what scraps they can Ooh. from the industry, tools that would otherwise bring their demise. And if they're fortunate real. and driven enough, they'll be able to use what they can to craft something that is true to their ideals, that helps them through this war. These ideas and themes of the Forever Winter actually date almost a decade back, in times before generative AI or industry-wide layoffs, and it all feels chillingly prophetic now. It's prophetic. Hell is war. War is hell, hell is war. Mm. Equally prophetic, however. Dude! Is it because you guys are into Warhammer? That's why you like media with the war themes or is it because you're into war themes that you got into warhammer which one came first your interest in like war related stuff or your interest in warhammer war never changes mm, grim dark roach life yeah you gotta be a roach dude more into fallout than warhammer yeah i found I've never been into Fallout. I, I saw the the series though. The series is pretty good. It's quite disgusting, but it's good. <laughs> also, I was about to say, like, here, when he was talking about, like, you're the small guy in the big world, right? I think that this is a really effective way of showing the scale of something. In order to show the scale of something, you kinda have to put it from the perspective of like a human. Because if you only show the big things, if you only show the crazy big things, the machines, or like mecha, without reference to humanity, you don't really get the full scale and the full weight of what's really going on in the world. I feel like that's a really effective way of telling the story and setting the tone of this world because it's from the perspective of someone small but if you think about it if it's if it's from the perspective of someone in the machine or someone in the mecha it kind of gives off a different vibe yeah because when you're the small guy it gives a lot of it shows a lot of helplessness and stuff <gasps> it's about helplessness, about war, oh, the suffering, oh, dude, oh, we are getting deep here. Sheesh. Both, but Warhammer were the first one. Mm. There's this aesthetic that I enjoy, it's this sort of industrial religious looking stuff. Industrial? Industrial religion. That's a good way to describe that, huh? Industrial religious. Holy! The games came first, and yeah, you are uh, the small guy scavenging until you have good gear or dead. I was interested by the big awesome space marine power armor. Like Warhammer, cause cool, and the Lord trapped me in Warhammer. <laughs> the Lord got you. Oh, shit. War first, but Oryx made me smile, so I got into Warhammer. Mm -hmm. French Crusades is like this in different way to Forever Winter. It's like 1914, so... It has World War One aesthetic where Forever Winter is modern warfare. Yeah, this seems really modern. Like, probably in an age where the machine and the man are gonna be um, smooshed together. Like, mechanical. You gotta praise the machine god. Mm? Because it's uh, a flesh. Is weak. And the machine is eternal. Ah! But I am already saved. Rawr. God, I love Mechanicus. I've been enjoying playing Mechanicus, by the way. If you have, if you missed the the stream where I played Mechanicus, I am enjoying it. <laughs> We're gonna have another Mechanicus stream this week. Oh, I love Mechanicus. He's really good. I am aware of your oh, existence. sorry. Wait, where, where were we? If you're lucky enough, you may- Um... Hell is war. There we go. Hello, Raynor. How are you doing? How are you doing? The larger themes the world of the Forever Winter deals with. 
In our first meeting, Miles pulled up his little lore and concept art file, and an image popped up. So, yeah, some of the stars are not safe for work, he says, almost embarrassed, as I'm greeted with a main battle Ooh. tank covered in a neat layer of stripped and... It's a battle tank with the flesh meats. With flesh shields, flesh armor. Oh my god, the machine god. Hmm. Canada defense, the average imperial citizen in Fortiki has no idea what the heck is going on because they're basically made to live with blinders on. Imperial Guard is where it's at. Mm. Who is that? Keep dying, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, oh! Jeremiah, how I hate him. I like Manari is better in mechanicals. Release a follow up video going to gameplay mechanics. Mm. Snake mechanicals meme become true. <laughs> I am already safe. Gotta go now. Take care. See you later, bro. Thanks for dropping by. Would you find rogue trading interesting? Mm. The thing about rogue trader, it's... I know it's a long game. I know somebody who plays it. It's gonna be a long game. I don't know. <laughs> and I have Baldur's Gate as well. And I haven't finished one gameplay of Baldur's Gate yet. So there's that. <laughs> oh, I feel like I should finish Baldur's Gate first if ever I want to go into Rogue Trader. We'll see. Found corpses. It's not clear if they're here for intimidation, for ballistic protection, or for field rations or a grotesque combination. Field rations? Ooh. Yeah, that's the vibe that this game has. For the winter is about war, but in a way that is far more nuanced than the average first or third person shooter. Miles gave me the analogy that if Gears of War was a real scenario, if you were actually there, it wouldn't be an action adventure game. It'd be horror. It's I a survival call this game horror. Anti-shooter because of its mechanics, which I will come back to later, Ooh. but also because of its themes. Ooh. I like those uh, those things. Not this one. This is gross. This one's. That design is good. It's like a big mosquito with the uh, bubbles. Oh, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful art. Later, but also because of its themes and design. It's invariably yeah. anti war media, investigating the logical progression of mechanized armed conflict. A future where war has become religion, where a gun becomes a monument, where machines of war, war are become religion. To be prayed to. Forever Winter says, Yeah, keep it up, world. This is where we're going. This game is set on a future Earth. In early iterations of the game, they were much more literal with their imagery, hitting very close to home with their references to real conflict. In order to touch on increasingly dark subject matter while also telling their own story which felt both respectful and allowed creative freedom, concept artists such as Rayo Lyra felt that stylization was the key direction to take. Hell yeah, stylization! Way, fable tells a universal dude, dude, story. dude, dude, stylization is king. Because you, you know this, like... Big triple A games, they always go for the realistic stuff, like super hyper realistic games. They look like, oh my god, you're you, it looks too real, and you, your PC cannot even run that shit. It's not where it's at, dude. For games, for games, you need style, you, you need style points. If you always go for the hyper realism, it's like, why would you play the game if you could just go out and experience real life? Although there's like a few exceptions to that, I'm just saying, right? Like, if everything in the game is too real, why? You're just copying reality. You should make something better than reality. Or something worse than reality. <laughs> I don't know, man. I heard Drug Trader, Abelard announced me. No, I'm, somebody, somebody just asked if I'm gonna play Rogue Trader, I'm not sure. I, I feel like Legendary is gonna have a say about it, for sure. <laughs> I know this guy, he likes Rogue Trader. Through simplistic and approachable presentation, the Forever Winter's visual style makes clear references to recognizable imagery, warped through a neo-mythology of the game's setting and conflict, similarly to how 2003's The Second Renaissance repeatedly uses Oh, I love this! Animatrix! Science fiction oh, I love it! Very real implications. Buildings and statues warping like datamosh visual artifacts after years of 3D printing bots I love and forgotten their original shape. 
prayers and dedications etched onto the body armor of mech units, graveyards forming canyons and valleys as thousands of bodies, weapons, and refuse pile around the trenches. Flamethrower units wear spacesuits, Damn. relics of a lost civilization, this once beauty, beacons of huh? hope for a future in the stars, now simply coveted for the flame retardant properties of their material. One of the things that draws me into Forever Winter's world is that despite being a game about scavs wearing gigantic backpacks dodging cyborgs dropped from stealth bombers, the story, tone, and world feels creepily, unsettlingly real. Oh, it's too real! Oh! Dude, you know what? I'm not even interested in the game, I'm interested in the lore. The way he presents the lore, and the way he presents the world, is very interesting. Subscribe and like. This guy knows how, how to convince somebody. This guy knows how to sell stuff. This guy knows how to sell lore. Oh shit, I'm invested in it. The analogies about humanity being wired for That's adoration beautiful. of idols, about how algorithms and artificial intelligencies are becoming figures of worship, defining one's worldview, who they hate, fight, or love. It's all incredibly serious subject Ooh. matter, told through the lens of a cool mech game. So why place so much attention on the lore, meta references, and philosophy? No, just talk about the lore, man. Down the game's mechanics. Just talk about the lore. Honestly, I love it because it's so interesting to me that it'll receive its entire own video, breaking down my own gameplay, my experiences, and the details of the complex AI systems the game brings forward. But more importantly, because this level of world building with subject matter, imagery, and philosophy flowing straight out of the minds of the artists, ah, this is the level of soul. Uh, dude, he, his character reminds me of that walking simulator. What's that walking simulator? Stranding. That's stranding. I forgot to mention earlier. It's, it, this impractical. Maybe it's practical actually. My bad. My, this framework of a backpack reminds me of Dead Stranding. <laughs> I guess you're a scavenger. That's that makes sense. This is the level of soul and depth that I've been seeking in my little niche. The depth, the soul, so yes. Many years. And it feels like a moment in art and gaming that hasn't happened in a long, long time. That depth behind the art is exactly the aspect of gaming that I always loved the most when I was younger. Why I used to browse concept art forums. Oh, and spend the concept hours art is always beautiful. Of NPC dialogue. This isn't all to say, however, that Doki. the Forever Winter's lore masks a simple, dumb co op shooter. The world and tone of the game was developed right alongside the gameplay. A style of gameplay that I've always wanted, but never really seen attempted. Deep lore is half of why I like Souls games so much. I don't know a lot of lore in the Souls games. I, I just like to experience the game first, and then maybe dive into the lore later. That's what I think about playing games most of the time. Most of the time, I just want to experience the game. I don't want to be bombarded with lore first. <laughs> but once I get into the lore, I'm like, man, that's amazing. Because, you know, sometimes when you learn about the lore it, and when you know more about the background of a game, sometimes the game could disappoint you in a lot of ways because you kind of expect all these big things. From the game and then you play it and it's like where is all the stuff that they said in the lore or if it's, if it's like barely mentioned or, or they didn't even show it you know so for games most of the time i would like to play the game first play through the game and then watch an hour of lore dives yeah yeah debating on getting it but i'm not sure i'm not really good at rts games Real-time strategy? Mm. One of the core ideas beyond that you are not this guy, you are this guy, is a concept that Miles likes to call combat voyeurism. Essentially, combat voyeurism. It's what it like. huh? You're not the center of these battles, you're always on the periphery. As you move around the battlefield, certain you're silhouettes You're not the main character. Oh. As you play, you'll gather more understanding of what they mean. There's two MBTs. There's oh a my god! Team. This is like NPC simulator. You're, you're, you're just a little guy and the, the anime protagonists are fighting and you just have to survive and hope nobody notices you. <gasps> NPC simulator! Oh, shit! Backing up an Exo. There's a group of European EOD and cyborgs. There's a duo of Euruscan Olgas. 
There's drones coming from behind me and UAVs in front of me. And oh Jesus Christ, what is that? Anticipating oh, how you move, track, and engage each other, and how you can scoop up the scraps of the battle stealthily. That's the core of what this game is about, and it leads to some really interesting moments. The movement, Looting. looting and shooting is super simple. The loop is entirely based around emergence, player choice, and tactics, a smash between roguelike RTS and third. Oh, I love roguelike gameplay. Mm. The world exists no, despite sure. <laughs> you rather than for you. And how you navigate it will change with every mission, every you. combination of scenarios that the game rolls for you. More specific ground level mechanics like threat rating, aggro pacing, weight class, the pathing and AI director. You won't understand any of what I just said, but you will soon again in the next video. But suffice it to say this, the Forever Winter is basically a large scale battle simulator where you're stuck right on the ground in the middle of it. The world will react to you, but these armies are here to mess each other up first. And mm -hmm. you're also there. Yeah, you're just there. One of the key original inspirations for the game, besides the Animatrix and 90s mecha anime, of course, was the opening to Terminator 2, the massive mechanized war. I haven't watched Terminator. Like rats in a maze below ground, massively out. Dude, I haven't seen the Terminator yet. I only know about it because of the memes. <laughs> oh my god. Matched by the horrors above them, taking whatever tiny chances they can to strike back. The other analogy of the gameplay loop, the one that I actually find the most accurate, is the legendary long take near the end of Alfonso Cuaron's Children of Men. Rebels Children and men. UK military clash in a slum, and the hero has to get to an objective while dodging the bullets and avoiding either side, viewing him as the target. This isn't to say that you can't fight in this game. You can, and you're gonna have to. But the armies as a whole won't perceive you as a legitimate threat unless you give them a reason to. As for how that's decided, it isn't straightforward. And again, you're gonna you just gotta sneak around. Say this. Just subscribe and wait for that full breakdown. War report. That's a lot of conceptual high level discussion that I just threw at you, but I've oh actually my God, played this, this game for like a month or so now. It so, be what is it really like? Back at the beginning, I mentioned how Fundog contacted me with the interest that I consult for them. I'm not gonna lie, at first I didn't really understand what this meant or why FDS would care about my opinion. But with thousands of hours not only playing extraction and tactical shooters, but analyzing them from a game design perspective, I'm able to provide input on the game's feel. How it plays from a gamer's or consumer's mm. perspective, while articulating my reactions in ways that are intelligent enough that they can actually help the dev team build a better game. I've been playing the game and giving lists of feedback on and off over the last couple months. You see it's that one right there. Should I should I shoot him? Dude, let's let's see, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh it's cool. First off. There are many gameplay elements of the Forever Winter that are super unfinished, and to be honest, I've never played a game in such a mid-development state. The game is, of course, gorgeous. The interesting result of a ah, still in the middle of the bit having of the direct creative mm -hmm. control over a game is AAA quality visual design oh, right that's beautiful. alongside utterly work-in-progress core systems. Despite some extreme jank in the controls and movement, the emergence created by the AI systems is completely evident. Without giving too much detail away, I was immediately struck by how much the world seemed to not revolve around the player in a way that goes against everything that shooters have always taught me to expect yeah because most of the times so if it's a shooter game you're the main character you save everybody but it seems like in this game you're just an npc told you it's an npc simulator dude oh shit gotta be stealthy and hope that the main characters don't notice you Woo. Terminator 1, 2, 3 are great, definitely worth watching. Hmm, maybe later on we'll watch it. We'll see. A ground unit will charge straight at me and I'll take cover expecting the worst. They'll open up with a barrage of fire only for me to turn and realize that they were targeting another unit behind me that I hadn't noticed the whole time. I'll take out a lingering sniper team on the edge of a battle and a fire team will come and investigate the sound, but I then simply move around the corner and there's zero way that the investigators will instantly know where I was or even how the snipers died unless there was a UAV unless. overhead that was scouting my position. One of the most memorable moments was when I first played. A T-90 was blocking our path to extract and I couldn't see any way around it. Just gotta wait for him to be distracted and we book it, Miles says to me. A group of heavily armed troops appears from our left and I think we're done for. But then they start opening fire and the MBT's machine gun lights up as something that we can't see engages the tank from afar. We crouch just feet behind the T-90 and its supporting fire team and slink away into the fog with the firefight continuing behind us. At every point in that encounter, I was expecting the tanks and AI to simply magically notice us when we got close enough, as every third-person action game has taught me to expect. But oh. that's where this game is different. 
In between the jankiness of getting stuck on collisions, frames dropping, enemies glitching out and flying into the air, these emergent oh, moments no. happen literally Ryan all the Josh. time when I'm playing, and there are too many examples to list in this video without spoiling mechanics. But suffice it to say that when the game's working as intended, it feels like that Children of Men scene all the way through. I'm not being paid by Fundog Studios for this playtesting and feedback, nor am I being contracted to continue helping them with development in any way. Which maybe means that I'm being robbed financially, but what I hope it actually means is that you, the viewer and gaming fan, can actually trust my opinion when I talk about this game. Part of the reason that they've allowed me access to their main development build is of course for giving feedback, but because they're proud enough of the systems that they're building Ooh, that they're confident in letting me check them out, however confident. unfinished some aspects may be. Miles always compares me to a combat journalist for the Forever Winter, combat the journalist. Evan Wright to the first Recon Marines in Generation Kill. But to be honest, I'm no journalist, and I think I'm actually quite a bit more opinionated than Wright ever was. I used to want to be a concept artist myself. Ooh. Seeing the industry going in a direction I wasn't fond of killed a lot of that passion yes, for me. Nice and art. corresponding with a team of people made up of some of the literal artists whose work inspired me when I was younger, that's been a pretty fascinating and honestly oh my God, those shoulder pads, dude. And it's totally revitalized my... It's not a spider. It's not a baby spider. It's a thick. It's like a flea. It's like a water flea. That's disgusting. Holy shit, that's a beautiful design though. Hope for the future of games. The Fun Dog creative team's ultimate goal is to craft a world that is so specifically uniquely itself that no amount of future intervention could ever be able to kill the original vision. Artists, designers, and creatives in large industries always pour their heart and soul into a project, and more often than we realize, their creations are yanked away from them to appease a larger system, and they fail. When the driving goal for development becomes risk mitigation, the soul of the project dies. A lack of outside funding and support that AAA provides might mean a less universally recognized product, one which may not tick all the boxes in the way that a big game can. But it'll also mean that the idea being worked towards is true in a way that approachable mass media rarely gets the chance to be. Fundog attempts to set an example for the studios that making something original and different might be less popular, it might be less polished. But by no, you gotta make risks, something original, dude. more specific, by having more heart, it has the potential to hit deeper for those core fans than a game yes! made for Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Don't make games for everyone. You need to make games that have a dedicated fan base you need to make games that a few people really 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 like you know what i mean if if there's a dedicated core fan base for a game there's that means they're doing something good you know because if a game is well loved by everybody it's kind of a forgettable game. Well, maybe it's not a forgettable game. Because it, I'm just trying to say that there's no way you can make everybody like your game. You have to find your audience. Yes, original games. Yes, yes to original games. I like original games. Could. Miles originally told me that the game was for the homies. And while for I the realized homies. that he said this meaning his artist friends, industry colleagues, and co-workers over the last decades, I feel like, fortuitously, I also sort of fall into this category. The Forever Winter is a game of passion, a game that would never get made in the AAA system. And these devs now That's get to true. take risks that they've never been allowed to take. They're not 100% certain that everything will work, and that's actually the beauty of it. They get to try. Brian Lyra told me, if we're gonna fail, at least we'll fail together. But in many ways, in creating a living, playable art book, in crafting a world that is unique and steadfast in its tone and message, they've already succeeded. With all the chaos and uncertainty of today, seeing a piece of art like this come to fruition gives me confidence it's art. that oh, might shit. have a brighter future than the world the Forever Winter foresees. I guess I'm just happy to come along for that ride. I'm Rilo. I like to talk about things that I think are cool, Subscribe for more like this, and I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Ah, it's pretty cool. This video is amazing. I love it. I love that the, the focus right away is art. Oh my god. Dude. Right yes. Lyra. Yes. I love good art. I like aesthetic. It, the aesthetic might not be uh, like conventionally beautiful, but you know, I like original stuff, great art, 
great concept. I don't know about the gameplay though. I don't really feel like it's a sort of game that I would play. Not sure, because I, I don't usually play like extraction games. And also like first person shooters. <laughs> I don't really play that much first person shooters. But the lore, the art got me. And how it, this guy explains everything. Oh, it's beautiful, guys. It's beautiful. Holy shit. Forever winter. Hmm? So we get to play the rats. Oh, the rats. I thought you said fake. What? A fake? Who's fake? <laughs> Terminator, follow the law of diminishing returns. One was great, two was good, three was meh, and everything else got worse. Oh no! This also reminds me of Appleseed. Half of it um, post apocalypse, the other half is this po dystopian future region. Mm. We are the rats, yes. We are the rats, we are the NPCs, not the main character of the game. Are you guys actually interested in uh, checking this game out when it comes out? Seems like it's uh, still being developed because the way he said earlier is like he tried the game but it's mid development. You guys are gonna be interested in playing this game? The idea is there. The idea seems uh, interesting. It's more co op than PvP, like that game where the coil head, I can't remember the name. Hmm. Co-op. I do like co-op games now. Mm. Co-op games are always fun with friends, of course. Co-op games, yes! Please check it out. Uh, do they actually have a release date for this? There's nothing yet. You are not this guy, you're this guy. Huh? <laughs> it's part of the Steam page. When you're the small guy in a big world, oh! I wonder when they're gonna release this. I mean, it's an indie company, indie game. Uh, the, the graphics look nice. I don't know how well it's gonna play. We don't know yet. And we don't know yet when it's gonna be released. Hopefully there will be a rela release date soon. I mean, if it has really good reviews, I may... Uh, check it out. We'll see. And if it's not too expensive, maybe. Co-op game. Because the thing about co-op games is that there's a... Even if I want to play a co-op game, even if I really like the game, it has to be like affordable enough so that the people who I want to play with can also buy it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, duh. Uh, that's kind of um, common sense. If they, it's like heavily co-op, I hope it's not too expensive. Small fish in a big pond. Yes. Looks like I'll have to upgrade to PS5 if I want to play. Wait! Oh wait, it's on Steam. Never mind. I was about to say, is it PS5 exclusive? No way. It's, uh, it, it's on Steam. Oh, it's the third person shooter. It's not uh, first person. Okay, okay. Mm, it's quite interesting. This is the ending song. Ending song! This is the ending song! <laughs>